Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar from the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as it once again looks very warm and very dry. The best conditions will probably be in the south and the west as we could pull in briefly cooler air in off the North Sea at times over the next few days. Where So towards eastern areas it could be more towards the high teens, whereas further westwards more likely towards the low 20s. So nothing spectacularly warm, um, but nothing cold either, just really quite pleasant for the time of year. And as we've seen the GFS, GM, East and WF and the ensembles, this is looking likely to uh, continue to the, to, to, to the end of May. Uh, as we head into June, could continue to the first few days but we are seeing signs perhaps at day 10 from the three main models today that we could see a dip in the upper air temperatures so the upper air temperatures over the next sort of week or so we're going to be around that 5 to 10 degree point in most areas and using the normal sort of plus 15 degrees for surface conditions we're looking at a highs of around 20 to 25 degrees on most days so sort of in that region for the high temperature but as we do head, as I said, into the first sort of five to ten days of June, there is the possibility that the high pressure moves a little bit further out into the Atlantic and pulls a northerly or northeasterly wind in. Not doing anything majorly on the precipitation front, but um, would drag in perhaps some more cloud and some colder air. It would dip those upper air temperatures back towards freezing, uh, which would give temperatures at the surface more around the mid-teens or even low-teens. So, yeah would be quite a change but it is still at the day 10 point and still quite uncertain so we'll explore that more in the second half of the video so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description so do start on the live road i want to get another stunning day widely sunny and fairly warm a few patchy showers across northern england but as I said most other areas are bone dry the temperatures as of around 4 p.m. again are pretty decent best in the west away from a bit of an easterly flow you can see that down towards uh, near the London area right along the coast it's chilly same up most of eastern England the best places are further westwards it's parts of the west midlands south wales southwest England southern parts of the republic of ireland and parts of scotland too so it's not widely very warm but regionally it is very warm with most places in that high teens to low 20s point if we do look at the ukv now look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days and as it's been for the last few days at least we're gonna be able to whiz through the precipitation because there really is nothing incoming in the next five days so if we do run through it you can see at the moment we've just got a bit of cloud around a few spotty showers through the afternoon and as we head into friday nothing at all winter saturday a decaying weather front could give a brief period of rain for northern scotland but it decays away to nothing and that's it until we head towards tuesday absolutely nothing at all but you can see the wind does veer more in from the east there you can see the line of the cloud coming in from the east and that will cool things down especially on monday in eastern areas you can see that on the upper air temperatures fairly warm over the coming days that colder air mass does veer around the east it does warm up as it does move in but it's briefly colder for perhaps sort of 24 hours there before the warm air does take back over as we head into tuesday so if you look at max temperatures, you can see the best conditions are in the south and the west, 20 to 22 degrees there. Further eastwards, right along the coast, more out to that 15 to 18 degree mark. As we do head into Friday, another very widely warm day, widely at that 18 to 20 degree point, peaking 21 to maybe as high as 23 in a few spots. As we head into Saturday, again, very similar, widely more towards that sort of 19 to 21 degree point, peaking at 22 or 24 degrees perhaps in a few spots. As we head into Sunday, things are starting to cool down in the north and the far east. Temperatures more towards sort of the low to mid-teens, but still in the south and the west under the higher pressure, under the very warm air mass, 22 to 24 degrees. But for all areas on Monday, it will start to be a little bit cooler. By the afternoon, we could peak at 20 across South Wales, but most areas back down to sort of 16 to 18. 19 degrees and the far east along most of eastern england into the southeast too more towards the mid-teens or even low teens in a few spots so monday could be quite a cool or cold day 
but it's only a blip and as we head into Tuesday things will be a lot warmer as we have to see in tomorrow's video. So if we do move over to the GFS now and have a look at the uh, pressure charts over the next few weeks, you can see the high pressure is firmly in control, and you see that brief easterly wind through Sunday into Monday that could cool things down in the east as we saw in the UKV, but again nothing too spectacular, and the high pressure settles down and drags up some very warm air from Europe as we head into the final days of May and start of June. And again, it doesn't look too bad at all. But you can start to see the high pressure there move up towards Greenland and cold air exit the Arctic. Very little cold air remains in the Arctic, but it's still cold enough to give a chill to the air. And you can see it could spread towards the UK by early June. So it goes from very warm to very cold in the space of a couple of days. And those upper air temperatures are dropping below freezing for perhaps 24 hours before it does warm up again as the high pressure does settle back in. So it is a briefly colder period. Again, it's not sustained. It's a few days perhaps. And it could break the cycle of high pressure, but GFS does actually have high pressure building back in here. So we would just have to see what happens with it. It is at day 10 and beyond, so it's still quite uncertain. But we've seen hints of this quite a lot over the last few days and really today all three main models are showing it which does give it a little bit more um, in terms of validity so we will just have to see you can see the temperature deviation is a cold air mass getting to low uh, down towards 8 to 10 degrees below average and look at the potential equivalent temperature just shows you that it is a very chilly air mass exiting right out of the arctic given a proper cold arctic blast wouldn't even be surprised to see a bit of snow over in scandinavia with this sort of air mass moving in but as i said cross border consensus is the most important thing and we are seeing it from the gm2 high pressure continue to dominate over the next week briefly cooler air mass early next week but the high pressure continues to dominate all the way into the first couple of days of june before we do pull in that easterly or northeasterly wind it's not quite as cold as the gfs we have to admit that but the zero degree isotherm does get into too many eastern areas it gets pretty far below average and if we do put on the two meter temperatures uh, you can see that in the day it would be struggling around the mid to low teens in northern and eastern areas so there's still the south and the west still might be pretty decent but for a lot of the country it would be a lot cooler out there and uh, yeah, not uh, as great as what we're going to see in the first seven uh, or so seven eight days uh, coming up again it is longer term it's day 10 uncertain so we will just have to see if it does come off if we compare it to the ecm wf again high pressure is completely dominating at the moment high pressure continues to uh, just build really Brief easterly wind, perhaps early next week, but again, nothing too crazy with that. And then we do see it retrogress up towards Greenland, and we do pull in that flow from the northeast. Again, the air mass is relatively chilly at day 10. It hasn't fully penetrated in yet, but northeastern regions are cold here, with the upper air temperatures dropping to minus 5 at 850 HPA. You can see it is really quite chilly there at day 10 and the two meter temperatures would be responding to that you can see down northern and eastern areas at midday struggling around the low teens once again so yeah looking cold and not looking particularly great so all three models are showing not the exact same pattern but a very similar pattern with a cold air mass moving in from the north or the northeast around that sort of day nine or day ten point we were said I have to just continue to follow it, but the fact that the three main operational runs are looking at it now definitely means that there is real scope for it to come off. So it could go from sort of being 25 degrees to sort of 12 or 13 in the space of sort of 24 to 48 hours with this sort of pattern. We just have to see what happens. Again, we're not expecting it until we get into the first weekend of June, around that sort of third or fourth of June point, so in sort of 10 days' time. So we will just set up to keep an eye on it. If you move into the ensembles, it hasn't got the most support, this colder air mass in the long term. You can see the next sort of seven to 10 days, all ensemble members are average to above average, getting to as high as sort of 10 degrees at 850 HPA through the final days of May and first few days of June. And again, that will indicate temperatures reaching a peak of perhaps as high as 25 degrees. Before we see that drop, around sort of the 4th or 5th of June. Here, most ensemble members are just around average or slightly below average, but we have got those of the operational run and maybe five or so other 
uh, rather than going down uh, much below that. The ones to minus five are very, very small. So I doubt we will see something that cold. Could be possible further north, but something that cold, perhaps uh, quite a bit more unlikely. We'll have a look at Glasgow in a minute, uh, as that will be a much better indication as that would receive the air mass first. So definitely a bit of a dip in the longer term, nothing too uh, crazy, and precipitation is still fairly minimal. If we look at the two meter temperatures, you can see really warm over the next sort of five, six days, widely high teens or touching 20 degrees. We could see quite a big peak perhaps around the final day of May into early June, where it could peak uh, in excess, perhaps of 25 degrees suggested from the GFS operational run here as high as maybe 28 degrees there in London from the GFS operational run before it does dip the following day to 14 or 15 degrees so a 15 degree temperature drop there um, from the GFS operational run that's just something to keep an eye on and you can see all the way to the 8th of June down towards 11 or 12 degrees in the day and that's when that air mass does peak uh, down uh, sort of towards freezing if you compare to Glasgow, though, again, you can see perhaps even more colder runs, but still the majority are around average. So it is pretty clear that it is uh, sort of not, uh, uh, it is sort of a pattern that could come off, but not the majority of ensemble members are showing it. It's not the, uh, it's not the most preferred option, but it, uh, it's definitely an option that is perhaps growing in strength. If you finish by looking at the ECMWF operational run and its ensembles, you can see generally warm over the next week to 10 days. As I said, those upper temperatures peaking late May, early June. We do see a big drop off around that day 10 point. Perhaps more of a drop off than the GFS was showing especially for Glasgow here. Um, you can see it dropping more below average here, whereas the GFS kept it more around average, but just showing it could be quite chilly in Scotland and comparing it to London. Again, very warm towards the end of the month at start of June. And again, seeing a dip down towards average and even more going below average here. So Eastern WF, perhaps slightly more bullish on it, but still there are quite a few runs keeping us warm out there. Uh, and again, precipitation front, we will just have to keep a close eye on that. Some precipitation is quite starting to appear into early June, but at the moment, we're not expecting anything too crazy as there isn't a lot of consistency with this and they are quite infrequent and all over the place. Uh, and we will just, as I said, have to keep a close eye on it. So as I said, in the next sort of seven to 10 days, it's looking very warm and very dry to end meteorological spring. Bank holidays upcoming weekend is going to be stunning. Monday perhaps could be slightly chillier, but it still will be bright uh, and still will be warm in the west um, before it does recover widely on Tuesday for eastern areas. But as we do head into the first couple of days of June, things could deteriorate a little bit with those upper temperatures dropping to below average, perhaps. A lot of uncertainty with it, but three operational ones all showing it today, so we will just, uh, well, so it's increasing in probability. Uh, but we would just, as I said, keep a very close eye on it, uh, as it could give a bit of a chill as we do head into the first week or so of meteorological summer. But the outlook is nothing too bad at all. Very minimal precipitation, so it is, uh, yeah, can't get much better than this, this time of year. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy your bank holiday weekend, and I'll see you again for another video soon.